You're listening to Money Talk on News Talk 580 CFRA. Well, it's good of John Embry, who is a senior strategist at Sprott Asset Management, to join us on this holiday weekend. How are you, John? I'm excellent. It's very nice to talk again, John. You and I tried to talk about one of our favorite subjects, meaning the precious metals markets, when there has been a consolidation. So hopefully it's a, an opportune time for people to pay attention to both gold and silver. Gold has been up close to $1,400 U.S. an ounce, and it backed off to almost $1,300 U.S. an ounce. And I would like to start with your overview on the situation since we last talked. I think there's a great deal of pressure building up under gold, which is going to take it materially higher in the fall. Things are very slow in the summertime, and basically there was pressure on gold for no apparent reason. So uh, I think that you're going to see a lot of activity in the fall, and I would be very surprised if it weren't to the upside. Well, before we started this discussion, you and I were comparing notes and determined that we together have about 100 years of watching the precious metals markets. And we, of course, went through the 1970s, which is ancient history for a lot of people. But we learned a few lessons, and we know that gold can have and silver can have quantum moves and that the situation then was much better than it is now. For example, there just weren't the derivatives positions around and there wasn't the ongoing battle between paper notional gold and physical gold and likewise for silver. Well, the other thing that you didn't mention that is vastly different from the 70s is the amount of debt in the system globally. I mean, it ensures, a, I believe, a destruction of the currency system as we currently know it. And as you're well aware, John, at that point, that's when gold comes to the fore because it represents real money and it will be seen as an alternative. And I think we're getting closer and closer to that day. There are so many markets that are at all-time highs. The bond market is, in effect, at probably an 800-year high with interest rates negative, which they have never been before. You have stocks that have been elevated because there are no returns in fixed income and people have crowded into equity markets. So the precious metals markets, besides being real money, are really a terrific alternative and cheaper alternative to some of these other markets that have gone to incredible excesses. I totally agree. I mean, as you mentioned earlier, there's been two massive bull markets in gold and silver since 1971. The first one saw gold go from $35 to 850 and then the second bull market in gold saw it bottomed around 2000 at just over 250 and saw it go to 1900 Now, with gold sitting around 1320 I suspect that before this is over, and this is a strong statement, I believe this will be the biggest bull market. It will exceed the previous two bull markets because of what we were just talking about, derivatives, debt, just a lot of insoluble problems in the world. Now, shares during the past couple of months during the summer have corrected from their high levels, and people should consider having a complement of physical metals and shares and I wonder if you could speak to the share market. Well, the share market had a spectacular rally off of, you know, a very cheap bottom in the middle of January. At one point, the Huey Gold Index, which I think is a very representative index showing what gold stocks are doing, I mean, it went up from, from bottom to top 180%. Now it's checked back around just over 20%, and it seems to be getting a little life again. I think this is a wonderful entry point, particularly if what I just said earlier, that the, the gold price is going to start to perform better in the fall. I suspect the shares, gold goes up, shares go up that much more. So I think it's a great opportunity to get into the shares again because we've had a nice correction. And I would encourage people to look very closely at this. And some of the big players, most recently we've heard that Deutsche Bank seems unable to deliver the physical metal against paper contracts, and I wonder if you could give your thoughts on that. It's enough to make one a little bit conspiratorial. 
I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you know what gold vehicle you own. I mean, obviously, the safest is to have physical gold bullion in your possession. Or failing that, if it's not in your possession, it's in a vault which you know is safe. But if you own a paper gold vehicle, I think it's absolutely essential that you understand exactly what that paper gold vehicle is. Like, I can guarantee you, for example, at the Sprott Physical Gold Trust, all the gold is there in the Royal Canadian Mint, and it is a very safe, fully backed vehicle. But I can also tell you that a lot of things that are masquerading as ETFs and that as gold, but most of them don't have the gold backing. And the very time you're going to need that gold, that's when you're going to find out that the gold isn't there in these vehicles. And that Deutsche Bank example you just cited is a perfect example of the problem that these people said that, you know, you could come and get your gold anytime you want it. And guess what? Somebody went, and, no, you're not getting it. That, that has been revoked. So, no, it, there's an awful lot of paper gold in the world that is nothing other than paper. Well, listeners may think that you and I are a couple of vintage gold bugs, which is pretty accurate. For the average investor who takes some of the things that we're saying and wants to add some protection against the valuation of currencies and rocky equity markets, a 10% or 15% weighting in good quality gold and silver shares and also bullion makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? I think it's absolutely essential made more essential by the fact that most people have no exposure. And so consequently, when this becomes obvious that this is a good idea, and it isn't obvious to most people yet, that you're going to see an explosion in the prices because there could be so much money out there chasing so little product. So consequently, I mean, if you share any of our concerns, John, anybody out there should have a minimum of 10 to 15%. And if you believe 100% in what our concerns, I think you should have a much higher component today for the very simple reason that the alternative assets, bonds, stocks, and real estate, are on the moon. They're grotesquely overvalued by any historical measurements. And these are some of the few assets available to provide protection that are relatively cheap. They're the only yep. really cheap assets because you can get into all sorts of things like diamonds and art and what have you. And they're all they're very expensive relative to where they have been, whereas gold and silver are just crawling along the bottom. So I, I can't emphasize enough how important this is and that people must take advantage of this opportunity. But we'll see. It's falling in deaf ears, that message. Well, at Sprott Asset Management, you have physical funds, both gold and silver, with the gold and silver stored at the Royal Canadian Mint. And there are some very good equity vehicles. And also you've got some exchange-traded equity vehicles that trade on the New York exchanges. So people should talk to their investment advisors and determine the weighting. I guess uh, if I had any influence, I'd suggest that they increase the weighting given the dire situation that is looming in terms of possibly a currency reset. That's very good advice. You know, and as I said earlier, I mean, most people have no exposure. And this will be seen as a, as a mistake. Like, think back to when we were in the 70s, John. I mean, if you had a 10% exposure in that era, that offset everything else that was going wrong with your portfolio. I think things are more dire this time, so I can't encourage people enough to have some meaningful exposure to this sector. And they, they're cheap. The, both the bullion and the shares are relatively cheap to compare to anything else. Well, that is a superb update, and thank you for joining us on this holiday weekend, and we'll talk again soon, John, and take good care. It's my distinct pleasure to chat, and I hope we can help the people. We'll go to the news, and when we come back, Michael Hainsworth, or affiliate BNN, talks to David Prince, who is the founder and president of Harbinger Capital.